Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Nonprofit Show. Today is something really different. I think it might be a little emotional. It's going to be thought-provoking. We have Wendy F. Adams, CFRE, one of our amazing and intrepid co-hosts. But Wendy, my friend, you're in the hot seat, aren't you, today? I'm in that hot seat. You know, um, Wendy, it's really brave of you to talk about this because you're going to be sharing a very personal story about dealing with legacies and the issues of gifts. As somebody that's been involved in the nonprofit sector and as a leader and done a lot of fundraising, um, you've been on the other side of the desk. But this is now getting your perspective. And I am really appreciative um, because this is this is a, a tough topic, really, I'm, for everyone, isn't it? it? It is. It is. But I'm so glad that we have the opportunity to have the discussion because mm -hmm. I what I walk through, what I felt, what I don't want many to have to continue. We just need as a sector to be able to address this in mm -hmm. in a good way. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes that just means we need to address it. And so that's what I'm hoping we are going to do today is just open conversation. I love it. Well, I just think you are a jewel um, of the highest order. And so that you would come forward and, and talk about this is, is amazing. Um, you know, we have amazing support that allows us to have these conversations. Um, and that comes from Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Staff and Boutique, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraisers Friday, and your part-time controller. As I mentioned, Wendy F. Adams, CFRE, um, cultivate for good. She's one of our amazing co-hosts. Um, they come from around the country. I'm Julia C. Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy, here to talk with Wendy. So, Wendy, let's back the bus up and and let's have people understand where you fit in the trajectory of your professional career in the nonprofit sector. Well. And I appreciate you saying it just that way, because I, I often say that I'm a recovering nonprofit <laughs> professional, right? And, and we do that a little tongue in cheek. Um, and that's a whole nother show. But really, where I am right now is, is working with leaders to make sure that their mission and their movement, those that are coming alongside all of the stakeholders, employees, board members, that they're all moving in alignment, and so I'm in a place now where I'm working as, you know, a consultant to individual leaders in C-suite in that space, um, but then also with board and making sure that they have all the tools that they need uh, to be able to make sure that those goals are really smart goals. So those audacious goals that we have out there for our organizations to change and transform the world actually come to fruition. Um, so that's the space that I'm in now after almost 13 years of being on the front line as a fundraiser. Now it's taking that and bringing it to to those who are who are really leading the charge um, at the top and making sure that we move forward. Amazing. So I want to be really clear about this because you have been on that other side of, of the desk as a leader worrying about where the money was coming in, keeping the wolves, you know, at bay, um, choosing a path. And it says right there, CFRE, Certified Fundraising Executive, that you've been doing fundraising. So this is a topic that you have dealt with. But let's jump forward a little mm -hmm. bit. You recently lost your mother and mm -hmm. you've lost several members of your family in a very short period of time, haven't you? I have the last two and a half years for significant losses. Yeah. And as part of that, you've been called by your family to do estate things, haven't you? I have indeed. And that is a stretching space, you know, working and walking through that on the other side, as you say, of the desk, you know, the sensitivity in that space, but much like anything until you are the one in those shoes, you don't realize how heavy and how much it really takes the intentionality of all of those in the space to be mm -hmm. successful. Mm -hmm. So we talk about this process that you've gone through, um, that you are going through. This isn't something that's been wrapped up with a tidy bow. And 
you you've mentioned to me you know this transformational giving the viewpoint that you received um from your mom's legacy talk to us about her life and if you will kind of what she was doing and how she got to that space because i think that paints a picture for the our conversation going forward and i appreciate that i i really do um you know growing up as a only child, single parent. Mm -hmm. She was a nurse, 48 years on the floor. Like, you know, I, she loved to teach. And when the new, the new students were coming in, she said, <laughs> someone's got to replace. You can't just, everyone can't be in an office. We've got to do patient care. She was a midwife. And mm -hmm. so it was always a place of how she could pay things forward. She loved the babies and she loved working with moms and babies. Um, and, and I saw that in her work, but I saw that in her day to day outside of being on the floor. Our conversations around the Thanksgiving table were always very interesting. I learned more about the medical world than any seven year old should. I'm quite sure. But in that space, I, all, I also had the opportunity and I love I love this to see her 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 desire to give back. So when we say transformational, it's not about just today. It's how do we pay it forward and that it would be sustainable. And mm -hmm. I saw that before the nonprofit world and a, being a fundraiser became a part of my space. I sure. watched and saw her do that in her giving. I saw the envelopes come in. I saw the mm -hmm. stamps go on, the decisions being made. And again, as a single parent, there wasn't a lot of finances there. But her stewardship said, what we have, we have the ability to share. And part of it was because of what she had received that she knew that she needed to give back. Mm -hmm. And and that had been instilled in me, again, before I knew that this was gonna become a career. And she was an immigrant. Yes, from the Caribbean in the West Indies. Mm -hmm. um, she left there at 21 years old, didn't know anyone and went all the way across the pond to England to do her training as a nurse and then came back to the US. Um, and, and there was a short period of time where she was married to my dad and um, that was not to be and was not a healthy space. Again, making a really hard choice and decision. Went across the country, uh, was on the West Coast and we were there for eight years doing traveling nursing and then made her way back East Coast as things with her mom changed in health and wanted to get closer mm -hmm. to, to home. But um, so many challenges Mm -hmm. Always along the way, I would see if we had and there was something to share. Again, mm -hmm. never left her her dining room table hungry. Let's just put it right. that way. Right. So she nurtures um, her community, her family. She nurtures her intellect. She nurtures nonprofits. She does. And yes. you are a child. You you probably she's teaching you these lessons. You know you you know the the significance of the little envelope um and you're witnessing this and then she passes away and you come to find out that there's been a significant amount of money that she has been stewarding out across a 15 year period that you can track let's talk about that and and let's let's Talk about the math, if you will, of this amazing, um, I'm going to say cycle of giving. And that's a great way of putting it. And, and before, you know, for us to get to the math, let's tell this funny story. I step into fundraising and mama says to me, wait, you go and talk to people and they give more money. So your gift of gab is what's actually making this, making this transformation continue. And so we had that ongoing, because she didn't understand it. You know why? Because in all of those years, when we get to that math, no one ever made that type of, of interaction with her. It was just another envelope and she would do, or it was automatically withdrawn and it would happen. She craved to get those impact letters, little children who were writing to her. But from the organization, she didn't have that type of interaction. So it was so foreign when I would go and visit with our with supporters of the organizations I served. She goes, that doesn't happen on my end. And her words, I must not give enough. Well, I do the best that I can. And that takes us to our math in what you said it, what I can track 
for 15 years. I have right. to believe it was more than that. We're right. talking on average $60 a month mm -hmm. in at least seven organizations, because those mm -hmm. are the numbers that I had to call when she did pass away. And mm -hmm. I was floored and amazed to actually do the math myself. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, what floored me in not a good way was the mm -hmm. response I received when I called to say she had passed. Mm -hmm. They were very gracious to share their condolences. Mm -hmm. What was never shared was the impact that she made through mm -hmm. every single one of those gifts for all of those years. There was not a word to say, thank you. Let mm -hmm. me tell you the lives that were changed in this mm -hmm. way or that. She didn't hear it. And now I wasn't hearing it. And now I had an understanding of what that actually meant as far as transformational giving, because I'm in that space and usually sitting on the other side of the desk. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you have seven organizations that you have to call. This is brutal work. I've done this before myself. Um, you're trying to not get too emotional. You're trying to mm -hmm. be factual. You're trying to have, all your ducks in a row, your information so that you can move through this phone call because it's grim. Yes. So you get the first person and you're thinking what? Like, oh, that just inefficient. They're not, they didn't know how to deal with this. That's exactly by time, it. <laughs> by the time you start moving forward, are you thinking, okay, this is a systematic problem? Number three, by the time okay. I got to the third call, I okay. said, okay, this is not someone who's just young in the yeah. in the field and doesn't know and hasn't been trained because I know that I have to have these conversations and receive them on the other end. Yeah. Uh, and so it recognized, wait a minute, we've got a breakdown. We're not talking about how to have this dialogue. But then I also remember they weren't having these conversations with my mother either. So right. we, we're, we have a breakdown <laughs> on multiple levels here. And I thought, gosh, we immediately, we have to do better. I'm still in the sector, very much still a part of. So yes, I was angry. I won't take that away. Yeah, and I was going to ask you. So, I mean, you, you, you said it. So many emotions are flying through at that point in time. And you're having to say, she passed away on right. Thanksgiving. What's the date? Thanksgiving. You know, and so yeah. over and over and over again, you're feeling it. But then to know that, this conversation could go very differently and put a piece, a, 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 a component of peace over the situation. If someone would just say, oh my gosh, so sorry for your loss, but let me tell you, your mom's legacy lives on in this way. And this is the impact. That didn't happen in seven conversations. So I, I don't even know where to go because I'm, I'm so shocked. And then to be very candid with you, a part of me is like not shocked. Mm. And so, mm -hmm. you know, because we, on the nonprofit show, we have a lot of guests that will come on and talk about stewardship and thanking your donors and responding to donors and, you know, and, and sometimes I'll be candid with you. I'm working with these guests and producing a show and I think, what the hell, this is basic why are we why are we having this conversation but i think your you know your arc is why we need to have these conversations and what i find fascinating is that you had seven organizations that's I, a hell of a lot that's a lot i mean we can tie this back to a number of things and shows that we've had opportunities to speak about the turnover. So is it a training issue? We, you have someone who's so new and they're in and out and in and out that it's not coming across. But we talk about this when we're in that in the throes of the CFRE. It, no, like it's not something that's not discussed on a higher level. How is it not translating down to the, the, the conversation with a donor? And I, can we get to the point that not only are you not honoring but you're losing an opportunity to speak to someone who could join you in that transformational giving. Because I'll tell you, by three, I knew we had a problem. By the time I got to the end of that, all seven of those, I go, look at all of those missed opportunities. I was so torn with so many emotions from being a fundraiser and recognizing how many misses, a daughter who was hurt, 
all of that to say, gosh, there were so many misses. And at the end of the day, and you've heard me say this a number of times, who loses out? Those that were called to serve. Every single right. one of those organizations, it was those right. that they called to serve who lost out in someone who could have picked up that charge and just not even given the opportunity. So let me be really blunt here. You're in the throes of grief. You're also the executor, executress of an estate. You're dealing with a mother who's been a working woman throughout the trajectory of her career. Um, so you have probably a lot of things on your plate that you're trying to deal with. She was uh, from a large family, right? They're one of eight. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> she had, you know, so you have this extended environment. You're trying to do, put all this together. Did anyone say of those seven, um, may we continue the conversation? May we um, ask if we were in her estate or, or like, how did, did that happen or not? Not at all. So Julia not went, seven, nope. not one. And that's what I'm saying. It was miss after miss after miss. And I get you don't want to go there first. And so maybe at a point in time, there was this recognition, well, how do I, I should, but how do I get there? Because there was no lead in. There was no, what we say all the time, recognize. You cannot outthink. You cannot out appreciate. But it's <laughs> in that appreciation, right? That, that appreciation goes out. The next gift is usually coming. And, and so it was it was missing the basics of how we are to be intentional in our cultivating and stewardship mm -hmm. that if they thought it, they recognize, well, I can't do it now. This girl is half in tears. She just mm -hmm. lost her mother. Right. And it's because they they miss that that component that we know. And you said it. That's frustrating. It's a basic appreciate, mm -hmm. acknowledge. OK, so then fast forward week two weeks, 30 days, 60 days. Did any of those seven nonprofits reach out in, in an additional way? Like saying, you know, asking the question, um, were we considered in the estate? Could we talk to you? Could we get you as the executress to come and tour our facility or learn more about it? Or was it just a gone? It was Gone, but not in the way. So no, no one ever intentionally did that. But you know what happened, Julia. No one gets removed from the mailing list immediately. And all of her mail is forwarding to me. So I am continuing after those seven conversations to continue to receive ass one after the other. <laughs> Please be a part of. So that's just continued daggers. I took the opportunity to not call all seven because I just couldn't do it. But I did pick two. And I use that as an opportunity to share with them these things that I'm sharing today, the misses, mm -hmm. and, and ask for someone who was in, in leadership in a, in a higher standpoint to, to really take those calls. And it was received well. There was embarrassment. Sure. And I think at that point in time, they didn't feel like they could ask me, but I just mm -hmm. said what I shared earlier, we have to do better. And that's mm -hmm. why I'm making this phone call. Mm -hmm. Well, and for God's sakes, when a C I'm just going to call it out, when a CFRE calls you and says, hey, let's have a little chat because, you know, you're not just like a disgruntled donor. You're an educated woman within our sector talking about this. I'm finding it. I, you know, you said this. It's heartbreaking. It's fascinating. And it's extremely maddening all of those things. And I had to make sure when I made those additional phone calls, I did change. I switched my hat to exactly that. The CFREs who needed to, to make that phone call, the one who is just like you sitting in the seat and, and, and go to the other side of the table so that maybe there would be a, that additional impact again, received well. And I would hope that those two organizations and some would say, well, Wendy, call all, you know, call the other five. I just didn't have it in me, but that those two would, there would, a difference would be made and there would be a change for the next executress who has to make that phone call. Right, right. So you've gone through this process and then tragically you're dealing with other family members where you're called into leadership. 
um, you know, the little that I know of you, if, if I was on a sinking boat, I would drag you into my dinghy to, because I know you're a capable woman and that you would see things through. So I'm assuming that this is how your family and your community view you. And so you're called to, to do more of this type of leadership. And this is not going to be the only time you're faced with this and dealing with an extended family in, in this space. How do we do a better job talking with heirs and understanding this space? Um, it is, you know, we have the silver tsunami. We are, you know, losing major segments of our population, the baby boomers, transference of wealth, all the things that we are talking about. And if this is, has occurred over the trajectory of seven different qualified organizations and we need to do a better job, how do we even begin? Well, we begin before my mother passes away and you're having the conversation with her. At that point, my mom was so happy to talk about what I did, even though she didn't understand it as a career completely for the longest time. That if someone had called and had those conversations with her because of her tenured giving, those conversations would have been opened up because I was starting to have those conversations with her. What mm -hmm. would you like to do in, in that regard? And so they, if, if you start there before you're getting to the air, then, then it's much more of a natural, con and we know this, so let's put it into practice. Well, because you're right, silver tsunami, but then you also have, I mean, good old Gen X here. Mm -hmm. This is the time I'm making those decisions of what I'm doing. Where, where, where is it going to go when I'm not here? And yes, because there's been all of this loss, that transfer of wealth is coming this direction. It amazes me the number of organizations, organizations I give to who are not having that dialogue. So how do we start the conversation? You're, that's part of the stewardship process. Truly, especially an educated donor, they're expecting it. They want it. They don't want what they've been doing for all of these decades to stop when they're not here. And so mm -hmm. it, it really is trusting that you have built that relationship and have the conversations. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, this has been remarkable. I am really, um, like I mentioned, Wendy, I'm really super bummed that this, you know, has been the experience. And I think that, you know, a lot of times we think, oh, it's a Wednesday, Tuesday. This was just mm -hmm. a bad day or, you know, turnover, whatever excuses or grace that we give an organization. But when you've had seven organizations that you, you know, communicated to, I'm assuming in the, pretty much the same way, right? So the, the baseline was consistent. And then to have this experience is just, um, it's a shocking lesson that we need to, you know, be, be not acknowledging, but also really revisiting, right? We, we do. We do have to be mindful of it. And then I'm going to, I'm going to charge my, my colleagues, those of us in, in the sector, because we do sit on the other side of the desk majority of the time. But when you get the opportunity to be on this side, make sure that yes, with all of your emotion, and you may have to wait two weeks to get it together, call back, have the dialogue. We've got to do better together. And so there is, there is showing the grace and at the same point in time, for those that we're called to serve, we have to make sure we're coming to the table with excellence. So if we make a mistake, we own it, but mm -hmm. we've got to be able to rise to the, to the occasion, right? And so that is, that's the point that I um, really want to, as we're closing, to emphasize is don't let it, don't just stay angry. Let's, mm -hmm. let's take that and make a difference. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, and I, I would also say, you know, put the fear aside because the fearful part, I mean, I'll witness to everyone watching as we conclude, you know, even uh, in the green room, you said to me, well, I hope I don't get too emotional. Right. And we talked yeah. about that because this is a hard conversation and I find it absolutely riveting that you are a CFRE and that you could have this situation occur 
And then you could use the lens of your education and your professional uh, professionalism to talk about it. It's, it's absolutely riveting. It really is. And it's, um, it's extremely important that we, that we revisit this. And so, um, you know, Wendy F. Adams, truly one of the best, I, I think you're one of the best parts of my year. My, I always go through like, as I end the year, I'm like, what were the best parts of my year? And I'm like, Wendy F. Adams, CFRE. One of the cool things that's happened to me this year, getting to know you and getting to work with you. Um, you can learn more about Cultivate for Good um, at cultivateforgood.com. You can learn a lot about Wendy's coaching approach, what she does, how she works. Um, it's a beautiful website, Wendy. Oh my gosh, it's it's really well done. But it gets into how we learn and 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 how we can navigate learning whether it's individually or in groups. And so um, take a look at that and, and learn uh, from, from Wendy because it's, it's absolutely, I mean, if nothing else, this conversation highlights that, Wendy, is that we have a lot more education, a lot more work. And, and you so beautifully said, you know, we can do better. <laughs> yeah, we can. <laughs> We can do better. And uh, so again, thank you for sharing uh, your amazing journey with us. This conversation's not over. We are going to revisit this and talk about this uh, more and more because it has been absolutely stunning to learn from you. Um, you know, our presenting sponsors are here to support conversations like we've had with Wendy today. And they include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Staffing Boutique, your part-time controller, Fundraisers Friday, and Nonprofit Thought Leader. These are the folks that join us day in and day out as we really explore some interesting things going on in the nonprofit sector. It's a changing target, isn't it, my friend? Moving all the time. <laughs> it truly is. Well, you know, um, we Wendy, we end every episode with this mantra, and today I'm thinking mm -hmm. about it in a in completely different way. Um, which often happens on the nonprofit show, but it's pretty simple, but it's pretty complex. And it goes like this to stay well so you can do well.